Hello, math class. Welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson six of the eighth unit, scale factors and 3D objects. You'll notice that this is similar to lesson four, where we talked about 2D objects, but we're talking about 3D objects in this lesson. And I want to draw your attention to uh, above the title here, where we have um, the, what the scale factors are for each. So we know that for a length, we can use a scale factor of just k. Well, for an area, we must use k squared. So it tracks that for volume, we're going to need to use k cubed. And that's what we're going to be talking about and using uh, in this lesson uh, a little bit and beyond. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, a pizza example to um, kind of show you how we can use this stuff in real life. So. We have, uh, we're trying to decide what we should order, an eight inch or a 16 inch pizza, and how much more pizza we'll have if we order the 16 inch instead of the eight. We are going to assume that the entire thing is pizza and that the crust is the same for each. So let's find the area of the small object, of the small pizza first. The area of the small would be equal to pi r squared. And r, um, when we're given a diameter of eight is four, so that means we have pi times four squared, which is equal to 16 pi. I'm going to leave it like that, uh, and you'll see why in a second. We can also do the area of the large pizza, pi times r squared. If the diameter of the pizza is 16, the radius is eight. So pi times eight squared gets us 64 pi. So we can see that we scaled up the diameter, right? If we're talking about diameter first, we scaled it from uh, 16 down to eight. So that was a factor of two, right? So that would be K. It would make sense if that was K. Now for the area, we took 64 pi and 16 pi, remember large over small, and we got four. And that's because we're talking about K squared. K squared should be four if K is two because two times two equals four. So that makes sense. We've used pizza to prove that scale factors definitely work. Let's do one more kind of proof example. You don't have to memorize this one at all. We'll just try to follow along, um, see where we're at here. Okay. So we are gonna talk about um, a cube. So it's got a length, a width, and a height that are all the same. So I can write its surface area of an original object as two times the length times width plus length times height plus width times height. So there are, on a cube, there are two different um, sides like that are opposite each other. So the length times the width twice, the length times the height twice, and the width times the height twice for a total of six sides for a cube. Um, for a new, let's say larger object, so the surface area of the new object is equal to two, and then we have to put in a, K, a, a, a scale factor of K for each of these. So KL times KW plus KL times KH plus KW times KH. I've added a scale factor in for each one of these. And if I multiply in each one here, k times k, that's k squared. So we would have 2 times k squared L w plus k squared L h plus k squared w h. And now I can factor out a k squared from here because it's common in each one. It would equal 2 times k squared times length times width plus length times height, plus width times height. And this section here, two and this section, is the same as this original bit. So we can say that the surface area of the new object is equal to k squared times the surface area of the old object. Using the transitive property, I put surface area of the old object in for this because I know that that's what that equals. So this is what we would call a proof. We have proved without using any particular numbers that um, for area, we have k squared 
that will be our scale factor. And it will work, it will track all the way out through volume. Let's do an example that has to do with uh, the pyramid. So the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt was built on a square base of the dimensions shown. An artist who works with plate glass wants to build a replica of the pyramid for an installation in an art gallery. The artist is restricted by the four dimensions, which are six by six, and then three and a half meters high. As well, his glass sculpture must have room for a one meter walkway all the way around the base. So it can't be six meters, like the whole room has to be four meters maximum. What scale factor might the artist use to build the scale factor? Uh, one thing I want to point out is if you can't see it in your booklet, the base um, side on the bottom, the number is 230.4. Up on the left, we have 185.4. And then for the height, we have 146.6. And these are all in meters, just so that you know. So first thing I want to do, maybe I'll just see if I can make the pyramid as wide and square as I can. So if I had my scale factor, um, the original base length is 230.4 meters and I know that I have four meters to work with I can I have to have a meter on each side so it has to be a, can be a max of four meters so if I used a scale factor of this which would be 57.6 I know that would work for the base but would that work for the height we need to fit it in under three and a half meters um, so let's find out for the height of the sculpture, we want to make the number smaller. So the number we're given is 146.6. So we can't multiply it by this number because it would make it larger and that would not fit in the room. We want to make this number smaller, just like we did with our other one, to see if it will fit. So I need to multiply it by 1 over 57.6, or essentially divide it by 57.6. And I get 2.5 meters for a height. So 2.5 meters is less than 3.5. So then this scale factor actually works well. It's actually the best. It's got the base as large as it can. It goes as high as it possibly can. The only way that you'd be able to make this pyramid larger is if you had a larger room, maybe eight by eight meters, then you could make it a little bit taller. But as far as this goes, this is the best scale factor that you can use when the artist builds the uh, sculpture of the pyramid. Uh, B, how much glass will the artist need to build the sculpture? So what we're doing here is we want to find out what the surface area is because the glass will go all along the outside. So, let's see, flip the page the wrong way. Let's see here, how much glass will they need to use? Uh, so we are going to scale up a surface area this time. So that means the scale factor that we're going to use is going to be K squared. So that is one over 57.6. And this is all squared. Oh, you can't see that, sorry. There we go. One, hundred, uh, one over 56, uh, 7.6, and that's all squared. That's going to be our uh, K squared for our scale factor for area. We need to find out what the area of this um, object is to start. So let's see, the surface area is equal to the base area. The base area was 230.4 for one side, so I need to square it. So 230.4 squared for the base area, plus four of the triangles on each side. So for the area, I need the base and the slant height. So that would be 230.4 for the base multiplied by 186.4 for the slant height and then all divided by two because it's the area of a triangle. So I would find, and then, so this is the surface area of the Pyramid of Giza, the large one. Now I would need to multiply this by one over 57.6 squared because that's my K factor squared because we're talking about area. So we would get 41.8 meters squared of glass needed. Uh, this formula, if you're unsure of, 
This is the formula for the surface area of a triangle, or sorry, of a pyramid. So this is the base area, and this is the triangle area. There is four of them, that's why it's multiplied by four. And this, as you need uh, to remember, is the slant height. It is not the height of the pyramid, it is the slant height. We end up with 41.8 meters of glass, meters uh, squared of glass. All right, we have one more problem and then your turn, I believe, and then we are done the unit. So a smaller spherical tank on a yard has a capacity of 1,400 meters cubed. So the volume of the small, I'm just going to write this here, is 1,400 meters cubed. And the larger tank has a capacity, volume of large is equal to 4,725 meters cubed. Question. Uh, during the refining process, both tanks are filled with oil from a pumping station at the same rate. How many times longer will it take to fill the larger tank? Than it will to fill the smaller tank. So essentially, they're going to fill at the same rate. We just want to find out how much larger the larger one is than the small one. So I would take 47.25 and divide it by 1400 to get 3.375. So it will take a little over three times as long. Question B wants to know how many times greater is the radius of the larger tank than the smaller tank? Uh, so in this case, we are going to have to use the scale factor that we found, which is k cubed, because I'm, uh, I'm comparing volumes. And I'm going to have to bring that down, right? I don't want to have k cubed. I want to find out what k is, because the radius is simply a length. So I am going to uh, take k is equal to the third root of k cubed, which is equal to the third root of 3.375. So k is equal to 1.5. So I took the k cubed because I was dealing with volume and I, I scaled it to find k. So I cube rooted it to find k. So the radius is 1.5 times larger. Radius 1.5 times larger. Okay. Uh, now there's a question here for your turn. So the larger tank is going to be uh, reduced by a factor of 0.6 to build another tank. What is the capacity of the new tank? So we are going to you can pause it here, and uh, when you're done, unpause. So if the larger tank is equal to 4,725 meters cubed, we are shrinking it by a factor of 0.6, so we're going to be multiplying it by 0.6. And it is going to be reduced, like the by a factor of 0.6, but since we're dealing with volume, we need to cube that. We need to take 0.6 times itself three times. If we do that, we multiply this by 4,725. Uh, 4, the volume of the new tank is equal to 1,021 1, meters cubed. So that's the volume of the new tank. And we use the, cubed, uh, the k factor square, uh, cubed because it is a volume problem. Uh, check out the summary, the need to know, and the key ideas, and do lots and lots of problems before the test. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, and again, thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you soon.